up everybody welcome back or to the channel so today is December 23rd so just a couple days before Christmas I have some family coming over tonight so I figured I might as well try to film a quick video and install on the bike build over here because I'm probably not going to be able to film another video until later next week so what we're going to try to accomplish today should be a fairly simple modification to the 2016 street glide build over here what we're going to be doing is installing the front crash guards now I bought all these products online and I will put the link to where you could buy these in the description of the video if you're interested. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so as you can see over here, I do not have any front crash bars and I do not have any of the rear. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to put the front one on today, which should be the simplest. The rear ones take a little bit more time because I have to take off the rear saddlebags to be able to mount them. And then we got to mount the saddlebags back on, but that shouldn't be too, too hard. I have a bunch of stuff over here, so stay tuned because there are going to be a lot of modifications coming to the bike, and my goal is to work on it throughout the winter. That way it's ready for riding in the spring. So in this package here, we have the front crash bar, and I believe in this box over here, we have the saddlebag crash bars. So let me go ahead, pull the bike over here into the middle so I have a little bit more room to work with, and then we'll start working on that front crash bar. Now, one of the main reasons I want to install the crash bars is number one, for the back, I want to make sure I'm protecting the saddlebags, especially when me or my wife are throwing her legs over, we're less likely to kick the bag in the front. And for the front, the main reason is because I want to put highway pegs on. Now, the obvious reason is because if this bike would ever fall over, the crash guards are going to help stabilize the bike from getting majorly damaged. But I hope that never happens but at least I know that it's somewhat protected when I install these crash bars. So the front one here should pretty much mount to a bolt up here, okay? And then it should mount down here uh, with a couple bolts as well. So let me go ahead and start unwrapping the front crash bar. And then this box here is gonna be the new highway pegs. Now these are the blacked out versions that are going to match this style but they're gonna be blacked out because my crash bars are all blacked out as well because my goal over time is to try to work on adding a little bit more black to this bike so it's a nice even combination of gray, black, and chrome. So let me get this unraveled and we'll be right back. Okay, so we just got them unraveled and it comes nicely packaged and they did show up in a box, by the way. I just burned the box to get out of the way, but they come nicely wrapped, packaged, and protected. They do come with the hardware, and this is the nice thick. Now, I want to say this is probably about an inch and a quarter. It's a pretty thick uh, crash bar here, okay? It's got your mounting lip up here that goes up top, up under there. It does have the bottom clamps. Everything's welded. The powder coating's done really, really nice. And this one here actually has more of an edge cut to it, so it dips down and over. So I like the look of these better, and they do come with the molded feet rests up here as well now my uh highway pegs are going to probably grab onto the side and come out but this dip right here gives you another foot placement for highway riding now just know if you do a cut down like this okay you're most likely not going to be able to do any lower fairing with the lower fairing speakers or anything like that to do the lower fairing you're going to need a completely different crash bar that comes more out more squared which I'm okay with because I really don't like the lower fairing and have no need for them. And this is what I was going for. So let me go ahead and start looking at where this is gonna line up and then we'll get this bolted down. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so we got the front crash bar installed. Let me just go through real quick what I did. Now again, this is not a Harley Davidson branded front crash bar. I got this off eBay and it was right around probably $80 or so and I will put the link in the description. So keep in mind, when you're buying aftermarket parts that are not Harley-Davidson branded, yes, you'll probably save a ton of money, but just be aware that sometimes they don't always line up 100%, and you gotta do a little bit of fandangling to get it to work. So the very first thing I did was I covered my fender with a cover because you always wanna cover that so that nothing's digging up your paint. Then what I did was I put the top bolt in through the very top hole behind here, which is very hard to get to. So let me show you how I did that. Now, again, I got big hands. I already busted my knuckle, so I got a Band-Aid on. So what I did 
was I took this engine mount frame bolt out right here. I used a T45 or a star bit, and I took this bolt out, which holds this frame mount bracket, and I moved that out of the way. That way I can get my hand up in here. Then I just used basically a ratcheting wrench to hold the nut from the back, used a little bit of blue Loctite, and used an Allen wrench in the front and just kind of tightened everything up to get it tight. Once I did that, I was actually able to come down below this front star bolt here, which was also the T45 on both sides. I took that bolt out right there and then everything lined right up. Now it was about a quarter of an inch off and these are not exactly easy to kind of bend and wiggle in place. So what I did was I just used a jack with a glove on top so I didn't scratch anything. Just to put a little bit of pressure on the bottom of the crash bar here, right here at the bottom frame, right my finger is right there. And I just cranked it up about an eighth of an inch to where everything lined up. Put a little blue Loctite on these bolts, bolted them back in, everything's good to go. So now everything is nice and tight. I ain't going anywhere. Now, let's see here. Now when I'm sitting on a bike, I got my crash bars here. I could just go ahead and throw my foot up top here if I just want a little bit of a higher cruiser. Next, I'll be putting my highway pegs on so I can get my legs reached out out here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next and mount this highway pegs right where my foot is. But this one here already comes with a cruiser. So if I'm just wanna lay back and kind of cruise like that, I can, or I could use the highway peg off to the side. So I got that on both sides, same thing. Put my feet up top. So that works out great. I think the black finish looks pretty good. And then I'll have to work on the saddlebags next. But real quick, let's go through and throw those highway pegs on and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so before we do the highway pegs, I wanted to go ahead and hook up my engine brace back to the frame. Now keep in mind, when you take that bolt out, your engine might tilt about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch towards you because that's keeping everything braced and centered. What I did was I just grabbed a hold of my highway bar here, put my foot up on the engine and push with my foot while pulling with my arm, level it back up and then I ratchet it back in. That simple. So let me go ahead, get those highway pegs unboxed and we'll come and get that done next. Okay, we are done. There we go. We got the front crash bar installed and I went ahead and I got the front highway pegs installed Luckily, I had a couple different clamps. I have longer arms and then these shorter clamps. So these shorter ones tended to work great for me, which are very simple. They pretty much just clamp on and you clamp on your highway peg, they could fold up just like so. So everything worked out good there. The front crash bar was a little tricky at first to get to because of this main uh, engine frame mount here. So I had to get that out on the other side, which I'll show you again over here right here, take that bolt out, move that arm off to the side. I was able to get my hand up in there and get a wrench up there. Uh, it was just a little bit easier to work with because I got big hands. So I got it mounted up top. Everything's blue Loctited. Everything mounted down in here where it needed to mount right there. Blue Loctited. Again, this is not a Harley factory crash bar. So it was about an eighth of an inch off. So I just had to kind of hoist up the bottom over here where my finger is right there with the jack, just to kind of leverage it into place about an eighth of an inch. And then I was able to get my bolts in, got them all tightened up, blue Loctite, everything's good. All the pegs work got good. I'm not gonna have time to do the back crash bar today just because it is getting later in the day. And I do have family coming over for a early Christmas party today. So we're gonna have to tackle that next week, but at least I got this done today. Front crash bar looks awesome. And I got the front highway pegs on, so let's show you what it looks like from here. So in a sitting position, I can actually use my brake and reach out and still keep my heel on the floorboard and rest them on the highway peg, which is good. If I really wanna stretch out further, I can on my heel, plenty of room out here. So that all works out good for me. I'm really happy with all of that. And then on the other side here, same thing. I can still shift, everything's good. Reach out, still rest my heel on the floorboard, still put my foot on the highway peg, and then I can also stretch out 
with my heel as well. And what's cool is again, I still have the top mounts. So if I really wanna get relaxing, I could put my legs up there like so. So let me show you from a different point of view here. All right, so with me on the bike, again, I'm flat footed, I'm good to go. I got my floorboard, I could ride, access to the brake, everything's good. Reach out here, put my foot on the highway peg, everything's good to go there. I can always stretch out if I wanted to, get a little bit more comfortable, or I can always put my foot up here if I really wanted to, which I don't really foresee myself using that one as much, but you never know. But this seems more comfortable out here like that. Everything works good. So yeah, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Again, I have black ones that go on the back. So, so far, everything's coming along real good. It's looking real good. Again, we got the front crash bar and highway pegs done today. So it took me a little longer than I wanted it to to get this installed today, mainly because I had to get some of the bolts figured out and get my access figured out. But I did get everything lined up and I had to use the jack. That took a little time to figure that out, but I got that done. The brackets that came with these highway pegs here were a little too long, so they could either push them way out forward or too close. And I didn't like either position, so I had to dig through some old stuff that I had laying around and found a different set of highway pegs that I had that had shorter brackets that work out perfectly good. So I'm really happy with how those turned out. I'll just kind of hold these off to the side in case I want to use them for a different project. But overall, it's coming out really good. It looks awesome. Again, next week after Christmas, when things calm down a little bit, we'll tackle the rear crash bars to protect your saddlebags. We'll get that done. I'd say probably in another week or so, I have some new Kuriakim floorboard relocation brackets coming. We'll do a video on that because those will actually pull my floorboards out about an inch and forward about an inch, giving me a little bit more legroom clearance. So I'm excited to get that worked on. And then I got some LED lights I got to put in. And probably right after the new year, when everything kind of calms down and there's nothing really else going on, I'm going to start taking my time and we're going to tackle the handlebar project where I have to take the fairing off, the gas tank off, the seat off, rip all that out, rewire everything, re-put it in. Because again, I'm replacing these factory short handlebars with the bigger 16 inch handlebars which are going to look awesome so so far so good really happy with this ebay style crash bar that's what it looks like from the front looks really good again it mounted good the finish looks really good everything worked pretty well i can't complain i'm really happy with it again i don't care about the lower fairing because i really don't like how they look so i opted to go with this one here that has the dip down like this I just think it looks better in my opinion. But for those of you that want to do lower fairing, again, this particular front crash bar will not work for you. You'll need the full crash bar that comes all the way out and then down. You won't be able to mount your lower fairing to this lower bend. So other than that, looks awesome. Really happy with it. So again, everything's coming along. It's looking really good. I can't wait to get this thing all done up so we're ready for the spring. But this is my winter project. Again, I want to work on this, get all these mods done. I am going to be shopping around for a new extended back seat. I have a few in mind that I'm looking at, but most of them are about an eight-week wait. So I'll probably be making a decision on that very soon, get it ordered. That way I'll have it by maybe February or March at the latest. Get that done. I'm probably going to be picking up a set of custom saddlebag liners, which I'm excited about that. They look pretty cool. I am shopping around for some storage up top here which is going to look pretty cool so again stay tuned to the channel subscribe there's going to be all kinds of stuff coming but again my goal was to make this street glide work for me because i'm i'm a taller guy at six foot three so again stay tuned okay everybody so that's it for today's video we cut it a little bit short because i wasn't going to have time to do the rear crash bar for the saddlebags we'll get that done next week but for today we got the front crash bar done with the highway pegs everything turned out good everything looks great I have everything bolted down nice and tight, use a little bit of blue Loctite, making sure it doesn't come loose, and I'm really happy with it. So again, for around 80 bucks for that front crash bar, no complaints here, I give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're interested in a crash bar like that, I'll put the link in the description of this video. So that's it, I hope this video helps some of you guys out. Uh, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And do me a favor, as always, please subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. It just shows me that you like the content that I'm working on for all of you. So that's it. Just wanted to say thank you one more time to all of you. Thank you. I truly appreciate you all. And as always, 
See you in the next video.